need to be filled up with more of you. We need to be filled up with more of your anointing, God. We need to be filled up with more of your spirit, God. Baptize us in your Holy Ghost, Master, that we will no longer uh, lean towards the things of this flesh or our desires, Father God, but we would always walk in your spirit, Master. We will never run, Father God, to the things of this world, but we would always run to you, Father God, because you are the answer. You said, look to the hills from with come at your help, Father God, because we're all in need of some help, some way or some sort, Father God. We know we can't do it on our own. Master, and while you're strengthening us and helping us, Lord God, you said that wait, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, Father God, and they shall walk and not faint, Father. Give us uh, uh, long-suffering, Father God, as we run this race. Give us patience, God, as we run this race, Father God. You said it's not given to the swift or to the strong, Father, but those who, uh, that can endure to the end, Master. Give us your enduring power, God. Do it now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. For you've all called us, Father God, for a purpose and a plan for our life, God. And we know that we cannot complete our task, Master, unless, until you do it in us, Father God. Use us. Father, you, you said we are willing vessels, Master, ready and willing to be used by you, Father God. So clean us up, Father God. Get everything out of us, Father God. You said get rid of the old wine skins, Master, because you want to pour new wine on the inside of us, God. Father God, you said create in us a clean heart and a new, renew a right spirit in us, Master. We want to be better, better for you, Father God, better for our brothers, better for our sisters, Master, better so that we can edify the kingdom because it's not about us, God. It's all about you, Lord. So you get the glory off of our lives, God. Every gift that you've given us, Master, help us, Father God, not to take it all for self-gain, Father, but to give it all over to you. Because we are edifying you. We're edifying the kingdom. And Father God, I pray now for holy boldness, Master. You said you will be ashamed before the Father. We are ashamed before others, God. And we shall not be ashamed because we know the God we serve. We serve a high and lifted up God. We serve a mighty king. We serve the Rose of Sharon. We serve the rock. We serve the great champion. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, we serve the great I am. We serve the king of king, the one who sits high and looks low. The one who ripped the veil from the top to the bottom that we can have full access. The one that created a garden relationship with us. The one that we know we have total provision. Everything that we can ask for, Lord, you said you would give it to us. In the name of Jesus, that's the God we serve. Master, and we don't want anything to be taken from us, God, so we give it all to you now. We deny, Father God, this flesh. We deny the pride of life. We deny the lust of the eye, Father. We deny it all to glorify you because you're worthy. You deserve it all, God. We don't have enough tongues. We don't have enough praise, Master, to give you the glory that you so deserve. Master, so get it out of our lives. Whatever you got to do to get the glory, Master, do it in the name of Jesus, Father. Because we know where we once were before you came and snatched us out of the hand of the enemy. We know what we can do by our own power. We know what we can do by our own flesh, Father. So, Father God, we give it all over to you, and we ask that you use us now. Use us, oh God. Do a new thing on the inside of us, Father, and forgive us of all sins, Father. Cast it into the sea of forgetfulness, Lord, and turn us from our evil ways that we will no longer sin against you. And we know, Father God, that we will never be perfect on this side of earth, Father God, but we want to be more like you. Give us your thoughts, God. Give us your wisdom, Master. Give us your understanding, God. Let us walk like you, Father. Let us talk like you. Let us act just like you. Father God, that we will make disciples, that we will show the fruit that we will bear, that we will have more peace in our spirit. We will have more love, God. We will show more joy, Father God. We will have more self-control and patience, and we will have more meekness and goodness and gentleness in all the fruits, Father, in the name of Jesus. Do it now. Do it now by your spirit. Do it now by your power, God. Do it now, God, because we're calling on you, Father. We're calling on your name, Lord, and we love you. We honor you, 
And we lift you up, Master. Bless the word on tonight, God. Bless the man of God, Father God. Let your word convict us even now that we will never be the same. Watch over us, Father God. Watch over those who are on their way to the house of prayer, Lord God. Thank you for keeping us from all danger, seen and unseen, Master. Send your angels charge around and about, Father God, the body of Christ. That you have, will have a hedge of protection over us, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we love you. We honor you, we lift you up, and we will always bless your name. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together if you yeah. agree with that prayer. Hallelujah. Come on, Hallelujah. put your hands together if you feel like you're blessed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me say it this way. If it woke you up this morning, put your hands together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, we come to praise the Lord right now. Come on, let's just push a little more. Just a little bit more. Let's lift him up. Hallelujah. Yeah. I know we're starting late, but hallelujah. 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 Let us not start without the Savior in the building. According to his word, he's here. Hallelujah. He said when two or three are gathered in my name, I shall be in the midst. There, I shall be in the midst. Amen. So we welcome you, Lord. Hallelujah. Let's go. Hallelujah. We come to bless your name this evening. So if you really believe that the Lord is worthy, I just want you to sing along with me. It's a real simple song. Y'all ready? Hallelujah. Come on, let's just praise the Lord for a second. And think about why he's worthy. Has he brought you out? Has he kept you from something? Hallelujah. Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy. And we give you. And we give you the praise. Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy. And we give you. And we give you the praise. Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy. And we give you. And we give you the praise. Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're faithful. Lord, you're faithful. And we give you. And we give you the praise. Lord, you're faithful. Lord, you're yeah. faithful. And we give you. And we give you the praise. You're always taking away. Always taking away. And we give you. And we give you the praise. Lord, you're faithful. Lord, you're faithful. And we give you. And we give you the praise. Everybody clap your hands in the sanctuary. If you're at home, put them two blessed hands together. Hallelujah. Lord, you're holy. Lord, you're holy. And we give you. And we give you the praise. Lord, you're holy. Lord, you're holy. And we give you. And we give you the praise. You're always taking away. Always making away. And we give you. And we give you the praise. Lord, you're holy. Lord, you're holy. Lord, you're holy. And we give you. And we give you the praise. Lord, you're holy. Lord, yeah. You're holy. And we give you. And we give you the praise. You're always taking away. Always taking away. And we give you. And we give you the praise. Lord, you're holy. Lord, you're holy. And we give you. And we now, give everybody you the clap your hands. You know he kept you. Yeah. Anybody blessed in the building? Anybody blessed at home? We came to give him glory. Lord, you're awesome. Lord, you're awesome. And we give you. And we give you the praise. Lord, you're awesome. Lord, you're yeah. awesome. And we give you. And we give you the praise. You're always making a way. Always making a way. And we give you. And we give you the praise. Lord, you're awesome. And we give you. And we give you the praise. Church, say awesome. 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 And we. And we give you the praise. Say awesome. 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 And we. And we give you the praise. You're awesome. 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 And we. And we give you the praise. You're awesome. 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 And we. And we give you the praise. And you're worthy. Worthy, worthy, and we, and we give you the praise. You're 
worthy, 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 and we, and we give it away. Always making a way, always making a way, and we give you, and we give you praise. Lord, you're worthy, Lord, you're worthy, and we give, and we give you praise. You're faithful, 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 and we, and we give you praise. You're faithful, faithful, faithful. And we, and we give you the praise. You're faithful, 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 faithful. So faithful, you're faithful, faithful. Yeah. Come on, I just want you to give him the praise break right there. And think about what you are praising him about. Is he holy? Is he awesome? Is he faithful in your life? Hallelujah. Holy, 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 come on, come on, come on, say holy, 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 it's the king of kings, the whole time, hallelujah, we just come to lift you up right now, because you're worthy of all our praise. Hallelujah. Somebody say Jesus. 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 And we give you the praise. And we give you the praise. Hallelujah. Come on. Can we seal it with a praise? We're not just singing songs and saying words. We mean what we say. Hallelujah. Because there's nobody greater than King Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 There's nobody greater than King Jesus. Hallelujah. If I had 10 million tongues, I couldn't thank him enough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's just talk to him. Hallelujah. Lord, we love you for your presence. Hallelujah. <laughs> mm -hmm. As we calm it down just a little bit and prepare for the word, the prepared word, let's just think about how great he really is. I climbed up to the highest mountain, looked all around, couldn't find nobody. I went down into the deepest valley, looked all around down there, couldn't find nobody. I went across the deep blue sea, couldn't find one to compare to your grace, your love, your mercy. Nobody greater, nobody greater than you. Searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody greater, nobody greater, Jesus. Nobody greater than you. Nobody can hear me like you can oh most holy one you are the great I am awesome in all your ways and mighty is your hand you are he who carried out redemption's plan you are he who carried out redemption's plan all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high, I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody greater, nobody greater, nobody greater than you. Come on, let's just talk to the Father for a minute. Search 
fall over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high, I looked and, low. high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody greater, nobody greater, nobody greater than you. I just want to come and tell you something. Nobody greater, nobody greater, nobody greater than you. I want to save you some pain and some tears. Nobody greater, don't waste your time, nobody sir. Nobody greater, because he's the king of all kings. Nobody greater than you. And when you got King Jesus, you got everything you need. So he's your source. Nobody greater. He's your refuge. Nobody greater. He's your hedge of protection. Nobody greater than you. So even when he left us here, he left us with the Holy Ghost. Nobody greater. He's thinking about Nobody it. Nobody greater. Nobody greater than you. Right now he's in heaven interceding on our behalf still. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Hallelujah, I just want you to saturate that in your spirit. Carry that with you through the rest of the week. Hallelujah. Share with somebody that there's nobody greater than King Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 I want to welcome you to Boot Camp Bible Study. Amen. Amen. And we are under the leadership of Pastor Moo. Praise God. Amen. Amen. To our virtual family, we welcome you to this Wednesday evening. Thank you so much for joining. Amen. If we can all look to the screens to read or recite our mission statement. Amen. It reads, basic ministry exists as the church of the 21st century to help, heal, empower, lead, and prosper God's people and their community in order to bring glory to our Father, which is in heaven. Why does basic exist? To help. To help who, y'all? God's people. God's people. Amen, amen. Well, God is a beautiful and precious spirit, and where does he live? He definitely lives in us. So find your brother or sister and show some love. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. We love you in virtual land. Amen. Amen. So we have assigned prayer partners. If you have not been praying with your partner, what have you been doing? <laughs> we want to be sure that everyone is coming together in, agree in agreement at least once a week with your prayer partner. Amen. 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 Next slide. 
Amen. First Fruits with Pastor Moo. Amen. Via Zoom, Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. is being led by our Deacon Stallings. Praise God for Deacon Stallings. Faithful soldier on the wall. Deek, we love you. Thank you so much for holding up your assignment and doing an excellent job at it. Amen. Feed My Sheep Grocery Distribution. We have fed 1,973 families. Amen. That number is climbing. We're going to be at 2,000 in no time. Amen. And we are in need of volunteers. If you are available on Wednesday, 12 o'clock, we definitely need your hands, your feet, your eyes, your arms, and legs. <laughs> Amen. If you are available, please see Minister Alex. Amen. He will get you acclimated. Amen. If you have not downloaded our church app today, amen. We're on the church app. Sign up to serve you know all the ministries. <laughs> to download our church app today, which is called Church Center. You can be updated with all of our events, such as Bible and Boombox, the Town Nights, or uh, Church Without Walls, whatever BASIC is doing, you will be updated if you download this app. Amen? Amen. Man of God, this is Pastor's latest single. Amen. Is this the video? Is this a snippet? Amen. Let's take a look. See how they face 25, so I shot some 45. Amazing, I didn't die when them yucks are trying to slide. I'm a man of God that the devil couldn't kill. Played the field, cracked the hands, smoked the tree, pop Now Jesus in my grill, by his grace I've been saved. He called my name and I came about the grave. No longer I slave in the trap down in cotton. I've been brought in by the only begotten. We rockin', yeah. Boy, what you say, boy? I'm a real babe, boy, that follow the way, boy. I'm gonna see your face, boy. Came to bring the hood joy. Got to light up on your block, rebuking all the decoys. Yeah. Jesus, like what? Like he what? saved my life, man. I gotta lift him up. Hey, I hope his name don't offend you, but if it do, then it's Jesus in your Hindu. I'm a man of God that the devil could kill. Come on Sunday to get the whole video, maybe. <laughs> amen, amen. I believe on Sunday. <laughs> amen, amen. That single is fire, y'all. We're looking at the numbers climb on Instagram, climb up on YouTube, and it's, it's really going there. So praise God for your pastor. Hallelujah. Amen. And his brilliant brain. <laughs> Amen. Lord Speak Women's Conference. Coming up, ladies, May 20th. Yes, you missed your five seconds of fame. Amen. It's on May 20th at 11 a.m. The cost is free. Please go to our website and register because we need a head count of how many women we are catering to. Amen. And so we have a host of people. We have entrepreneurs here. We have authors. We have uh, case managers, we have singers, artists, and a whole bunch of goodies for you guys. Amen. So please, please go to www.jointhemovement.com to register for this conference. Amen. He promised me Mama Jo is coming out with her book, y'all. The same day, the same day, May 20th at 11 a.m. So please be in the building to show some love and support to Mama Jo. She has worked very hard on this book, and she would be proud to see everyone that come out and support her. Amen? Amen. Let's show some love. May 20th, Filthy Racks. We are getting rid of our winter selection. Thank you, Lord. Amen. We're getting rid of our winter selection and we're coming with our spring t-shirt collection, y'all. So we got some new stuff coming on the road. They were loving the graphics that we were presenting to them. And so I know you guys will love what we have coming up next. We got some cooking up, y'all. Amen. Amen. The Dare to Dream program. We are bringing it back. 
So we definitely need your support for our youngsters. We um, are going to have them work at least two to three days a week, and they will receive a stipend that you know how we use them for our uh, town nights. And so we definitely need your support in donating to help fill that budget. Amen. So you can definitely scan this QR code and or you can give other ways via Cash App, PayPal, or Venmo to our Jerry Dream program. Amen. It is my turn to do Bible trivia. Or Bible drill. What do you think? Trivia or drill? Dr drill? Okay. I, I didn't get a clear answer, so I guess I'm going to do drill. Yes? Hello? Drill? Okay. Get your Bibles in the air. I'm not, we're not communicating effectively tonight. Do you want to do? Oh, my God. Okay. This guy. Here we go. Bible trivia. So. The trivia that we are doing was from Holy Week, right? Every All things holy, we were going through the story of Jesus uh, all the way from when he rode in on the donkey, when he was with his disciples in the garden. So all of these questions will come out of those chapters. So specifically, this one was Mark 10 through 16, okay? Finish the scripture. Therefore, what God has joined together, blank. Amen. Or one version could say, let no man separate. Amen. Finish the scripture. Whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a blank will by no means enter it. Mm -mm. Finish the scripture. God bless, Pastor Port. Whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a blank will by no means enter it. Nope. A little child, a little child. Whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. When Jesus said, let no one eat fruit from you ever again, what did he curse? The fig tree. Amen. Jesus said, you have made the temple what? After driving out those who bought and sold in the temple. What did he say? He said, you have made the temple what? What did he call it? Mm -mm. What did he call it? You there. But what did he call it? <laughs> you give up? Den of thieves. <laughs> Amen. In the parable... What did the fame, oh, excuse me, in the parable, what did the farmers do to the son of the owner of the vineyard? He killed him. Yes, in the law of Moses, if a man's brother dies and leaves his wife behind, what should his brother do with the family? Take him, take his wife and raise the children for his brother. Name the two great commandments. And you right there. Go. Love your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Af okay. Two great commandments. Love your God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. Those are the two great commandments. After the great tribulation, what will happen to the stars of heaven? They will fall. Last one. Jesus said, blank and blank shall pass away, but my word will remain forever. Heaven and earth. Heaven and earth. Amen. Good trivia, y'all. Give yourselves a round of applause. Amen, amen. To God be the glory, amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord, amen. Always good to assemble with God's people, amen. Amen. want to pray for our brothers and sisters not here, amen. Keep them lifted up in prayer, amen. I do want to say, amen, before we go into the word, and this will be our final fruit, amen. 
Amen. Series we've been in, but I do want to say, brothers and sisters, or let me say, I want to thank you. Amen. Thank Y'all with me? Okay. And on uh, on last week, of course, I was on tour. Went to Arizona, then L.A. Amen. But when we got here, y'all, it was amazing. Not, not that it wasn't good out there. Don't get me wrong. It was it was great. Amen. The fellowship and to be with the body. Amen. But everyone uh, here, amen, operated. Amen. With excellence. Amen. Everything was ready. It was put together. Amen. The spirit was here. Amen. Actually, one of the testimonies of Dayton that when he said, I, when I came in the building, I felt the spirit of joy. Amen. So I just want to thank you. Amen. That's right. Give yourselves a round of applause. Amen. It's just for, amen, loving the Lord the way you do. Amen. And being on your post. Amen. Amen. And it was amazing. It was amazing. And telling brothers and sisters about it. The house was packed. Amen. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Pastor Port, for being with us. Amen. He snuck up on us. <laughs> I walked up the hall and said, oh, what's up, sir? <laughs> amen. It's always a blessing. Amen. Amen. For, amen. Pastor to be with us, one of my mentors to be with us. Amen. Well, brothers and sisters, we're about to get back, go back into Galatians chapter 5. Amen. Well, and we left off, of course, our fruits of the Spirit passages at 22. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. Amen. Thank you all for, amen, being consistent here. Amen. And learning the fruits of the Spirit. Amen. And I thank you all for doing your homework. Who had did, who has done their homework. Amen. Galatians 5. We're going to read verses 22 through, amen, 22 through 23. Amen, Galatians 5, chapter, amen. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 through 23. Go ahead. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, Against such there is no law. Against such there is no law. Amen. Of course, we understand that they are, amen, we've covered, amen, nine fruits. Amen. Amen. One thing I, I want to continue to mention, amen, brothers and sisters, that the fruits of the Holy Spirit are the characteristics of our Father. The fruits of the Holy Spirit are the characteristics of our Father. Amen. The Holy Spirit, amen, is the DNA of God. Jesus was birthed by the Holy Ghost. Amen. We call that what? What do we call that? The Immaculate Conception. Amen. That Jesus was not birthed of man's seed, but he was birthed of God's seed which is the Holy Spirit. Amen? And if you and I are a legitimate child of God, guess what you have to be? Born of the Holy Ghost. You, all, you, you heard me say this? Amen? Amen? While we've been teaching this, amen? Just because you come to church does not make you a child of God. Just because you have a religious title does not make you a child of God. Just because you know a couple of songs, that does not make you a child of God. What makes you a legitimate child of God is that you have been born of God. Are y'all listening to me? You have been born again. What makes you your, your parents' child is not that you live in their house. Are y'all listening to me? It's that you, amen, have been born of their seed. And any time, brothers and sisters, you are born of an individual, you have what we call DNA. All right. And DNA just it, 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 it happens organically. You heard me say that some of you do things just like your daddy. Some of you, amen, may sound just like your mama. Amen. You just have their ways. You don't even try to have their ways. It's just organic because the same DNA that is in them is in where you. And so when we're talking about the fruits of the Holy Spirit, amen. These are, this is the characteristics of God. This is what's supposed to pass through, 
amen, the DNA of God. Amen. amen. If you are born of God, you're supposed to be loving. That's right. If you are born of God, you're supposed to have joy yeah. and peace and long-suffering and kindness and gentleness yeah. and faithfulness and self-control. Amen. And you don't have to try. It's supposed to just happen. happen. Like I said, the, I, I do. my mama would tell me, you do that just like your daddy. I never even knew my daddy did that. Mm -hmm. but, she, but she knew him, and she said, that looked just like your daddy. I didn't try to hold my hand like that. Mm -hmm. I didn't try to make my voice sound like that. It just happened organically. Right. When we are born of God, these fruits are supposed to happen organically. Right. Jesus said something very interesting. Amen. When they were talking about uh, uh, who is a real prophet or a fake prophet, how would we know the difference? Jesus said you're going to know them by their fruits. Amen. And he's not just talking about the right and the wrong. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because you heard me say this. Wrong people sometimes do right, right things. things. And, right, and, and, and right people sometimes do what? Wrong things. So, so it can't just be the wrongs and the rights. Yeah. But he's talking about the fruit. Yeah. Are y'all listening to me? Yeah. Fruit is a product of something being planted in you mm -hmm. or something being planted. When a tree bears fruit, it's because the tree has been planted in the ground. Yeah. Are y'all listening to me? Mm -hmm. if, you're wick if you bear wicked fruit, that means wickedness is planted in you. Yeah. Good God That's Almighty. Good. And, if, and if the Holy Ghost is planted in you, and this is what we're supposed to bear. Good. Right. Good. Does that make sense, brothers and sisters? Yeah. Amen. So, so one, you heard me say this about fruit also. You don't see fruit overnight. Right. If you know anything about agriculture, you don't plant a tree today and then see an apple tomorrow. Right. It takes time to see fruit. Amen. In other words, you can't judge a person too quick. Right. Right. Don't, don't call them a saint too quick. <laughs> and don't call him a devil too quick. Watch him through time. Yeah. Are y'all listening to me? Yeah. And after a while, you will start to see yeah. who they really are. Does that make sense, brothers and sisters? Yeah. You're going to know them by their fruit. fruit. Mm -hmm. We as believers, people should know us by being loving. Amen. They should know you just always smiling. That mean it all. That doesn't mean everything always going good in your life. Right. Hey, Mother Jerry, you just always smile, <laughs> <laughs> right? Amen. But that doesn't mean everything is always going good in our life. Yeah. Right. But I got something in me. Good God yeah. Almighty. Yeah. That, that even on the outside, if it's negative, that don't mean I have to be negative on the inside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does, does that make sense? That's that's why they used to sing that old song, "The Holy Ghost on the." inside mm -hmm. is now going to start to work on my on outside. outside. How we affect the outside is that we must, amen, produce what we have on the inside. inside. You're supposed to just have joy, peace, yeah. all hell breaking loose, but I still got joy. Yeah. yeah. Have peace. Amen. Long suffering, kindness, just all this. Brothers and sisters, the world is supposed to see before we ever open up our mouth, our character is supposed to be our witness. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Tonight, the fruit that we're going to cover, uh, and this is a hard one for all of us. This is one I'm dealing with. <laughs> <laughs> He's where you can clearly see I'm dealing with it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, sir. It's called self-control. Ooh. 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 <laughs> One of the fruits of the spirit is self is self amen, thank you. Is self control. Can you control yourself? I was thinking about this, meditating on this today. I said, Lord, it takes the Holy Ghost to be able to control ourselves? And really think about that. It literally takes 
us being born of God's spirit to have self-control. That means absent of God's spirit, we're wild. That's what that means. Absent of God's spirit, we're wild. We have no control. Amen. We don't know how we can't turn it off. <laughs> we're, I mean, we're just wild. Absent of God's spirit. No wonder the world is, looks like the way it looks. No, no wonder our community just looks in shambles and wild. Because it's absent of God's spirit. So before I can per se, or let me say, before a person can change, right, their character, they first have to be born again. So don't be shocked at someone that's an unbeliever being wild. Does that mean, you know, you know we judge people, you, you should be better than that, and you should act better than that, and so forth. But if they don't have the Holy Ghost, they can't. Because we need the Holy Ghost to control ourselves. Good God Almighty. That means absent of the Holy Ghost, we will kill ourselves. We will self-destruct. Are y'all listening to me? Because we can't stop. He wants to stop doing what he's doing, but he can't stop because he lacks control. Good God Almighty. Your life with no control. Hmm. That's why we need Jesus to get control. One thing the Lord did for my life is he gave me control. Amen? He helped me control myself, control my tongue, control my temper. Are y'all listening to me, brothers and sisters? The Bible says this in Book of Proverbs 25, 28. The Book of Proverbs 25, 28 says, Like a city whose walls are broken through, is a person who lacks self-control. It says, us without self-control, and that's Proverbs, make you note that, 25 through 28, us that lacks self-control, it says, it's like a wall, a city without walls. Now, if you know anything about those times, the, 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 the higher and the stronger the wall was, the more prosper the city was. The more, the greater the city was, the stronger the city was. That means if we lack self-control, we're weak. If we lack self-control, we're going to find ourselves impoverished. Are y'all listening to me? Wealthy people have control. That's why they're wealthy. They just don't buy off impulse. Uh, are y'all listening to me? They don't need a whole lot of outside stimulants. They can control themselves. Am I making sense, brothers and sisters? Yes. Amen. Control or having self-control is like having walls. Amen. That's strong. It makes you strong. It makes you prosperous. Does that make sense, brothers and sisters? God has not called us to per se be pastors, even though this is a calling. He's not called us the per se whole positions as prophets and apostles and all that. He called us to be disciples. Christ is looking for disciples. A disciple is a learner and a follower of Jesus Christ. But to be a disciple, you have to be disciplined. You cannot be a disciple of anything and not be disciplined. Matter of fact, the word uh, a disciple is in discipline. If you're going to be a disciple, you have to be disciplined. Does that make sense, brothers and sisters? Amen. You're going to have to learn it, and you're going to have to put it in practice. It's not enough for us to come here and learn the word if you're not going to do it. You will never see the fruit of the word just by hearing. You will see you will get your faith strengthened, but you need faith to do. Only when we see the fruit of the word, the power of the word, is when you actually apply the word to your life. But to apply the word to your life, you have to be disciplined. 
Does that make sense? Because you cannot just apply the word in church. You have to apply the word in every circumstance of your life, every situation of your life. They just cussed you out. What you going to do? Are, are y'all listening to me? You, you're having temptations of lust. What you going to do? See, that's when you got to apply the word. Everything you have been hearing Sunday and Wednesday, when you leave out of here and you're faced with temptation and all type of stuff pulling on you, now you have to put the word, now you have to apply the word. Are y'all listening to me? So you can walk in the power of it. So you can see the fruit of it. Hmm. You got to put the word to work. It only works when you work it. This only works when you work it. And, and, and you have to work it when you're being tested. You have to work it when you're being tempted. You have to work it when you're under attack. That's when you have to work it. That means you have to pay attention when the word is being taught because one day you're going to be tested. And if you were not paying attention, you're going to fail the test. God Almighty. God is calling for us to be disciplined, self control. One thing about a soldier, and we call, we are in the army of God, we call ourselves soldiers. A soldier is regimented, a soldier is very disciplined, right? I'm, 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 I, done, I done jumped on this weight loss thing, Pastor. We, we got back. I got back. I said, baby, I'm finna do it. I mean, that's all, I'm, I, I said, we're gonna do it. Dude. We, we're doing it. It's been two days. <laughs> But, but we're doing it. But, but to do this weight loss, to get to my goal, I actually have to operate in discipline. No, no, listen to me. But nobody's making me disciplined. I have to discipline myself. Self-control. There you go. Nobody's going to make you do the word. You grown. Ain't nobody going to stand over you. When you were a kid, we make them clean up. We make them do right. But once you get grown, you have to sell. You have to control yourself. You got to put yourself to bed at a decent hour now. Uh -huh. It's over. You got to get up early in the morning and go to work. I got to go to bed. <laughs> Amen? We will never... Well, let, let me, let me, I want to go to 1 Corinthians. Go to 1 Corinthians 9, 24, and 27. 1 Corinthians 9, 24, and 27. And this discipline is not just spiritual. It's secular, too. You would never reach goals in life without disciplining yourself. You will never reach them without disciplining yourself. Whatever goal you have set for yourself, you won't reach it till you become a disciple of that goal. Or, or let me let me give let me give you a, a more uh, a religious word to to you make yourself holy unto it, to you sanctify yourself to it. Sanctify I mean I'm setting myself apart all the way to this thing. What makes you obtain goals is that you you want it so bad that you. Discipline yourself to get it. I'm going to get it. I'm going to do whatever it takes to get it. That's how I know I'm going to get it. Are y'all listening to me, brothers and sisters? 1 Corinthians 9, 24, 27. Read that, man. 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 27. Go ahead. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize? Amen. Oh, all is running, but only one gets the prize. They all got in the race. But at the end, they all not going to be winners. Only one is going to be that winner. Amen? Uh-huh. Run in such a way that you may obtain it. I like that. We have to live in such a way that you're trying to win. Yeah. What makes, what, what will help you be disciplined and operate in self-control is that you want to win. We, we're watching the playoff basketball. And we're watching these boys going, they woo. Let, let, let's take, I heard Lakers. Let's, let's take LeBron James, for instance. You, you know what makes him so great? And one thing 
that he's able to uh, uh, still play at a high level, even at an older age, is you should see that man work out regimen. Yes. Mm -hmm. You should see the way he eats. Mm -hmm. You should see his, his, his routine, how they work on his body and how they, you know, he's so disciplined and his discipline has made him great. Not just his talent, his discipline has made him great. Because you can be talented, and if you lack integrity and character, your talent will expose you. Because your talent will put you under lights, and then we're all going to see you're good at shooting the ball, but you're a liar. Uh, you're a whoremonger. Are y'all listening to me, brothers and sisters? Yeah. So it's not just talent that makes you great. It's when you can discipline your talent. Amen. Yeah. Are y'all listening to me? Mm -hmm. He works hard. He, he didn't get great just by getting great. Love you, soldier. He just didn't get great by getting great. He got great because he worked hard. We used to say this in football. When hard, when, 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 when we would say hard work would beat talent any day. But when talent works hard, it's unbeatable. Yeah. God told us to live our life as though we're trying to win. Oh. That's good. That's good. You have to live your life as though we're, uh, you're trying to win. We made a song a long time ago, I'm just trying to win. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm trying to do in life. I'm trying to win. That's what you be trying to do in life. Try to win. Try to be the best version of you. One of the reasons I'm going to get this weight off because I'm going to become the best version of me. I'm going to become what I see. Amen. Hey. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. I, 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 we, we having fun and we really have, but at night, when I, when the next day, I can barely move. I'm so sore. Uh -oh. I said, no, nah, I got to stop this. I got to be able to do this every night and every night and every night and every night. Are y'all listening to me, brothers and sisters? But to do it, it ain't going to be easy. Ain't no pill going to help me. And I'm not getting no surgery. I'm going to discipline myself. Are y'all listening to me? I'm not going to. See, all that's the easy way. That's the easy way. No, I'm going to discipline. I'm going to tell myself no. Do you understand? I don't care how spiritual you are, how much Bible you read, amen, your titles and all that. None of that will make you say no. Okay. Good. Are y'all listening to me? None of that will stop temptation. Right, right. It actually will draw temptation. Yeah, it will. You still got to say no. No. Still got to say no. No matter how anointed you are, you got to say no. Uh -huh. Oh, and you know what the first thing they think when I got to my job this morning, because, you know, we can't eat the bread and all that. You know the first thing they offered me this morning was some good old old-fashioned homemade bread pudding. Ooh. I said, I, you should have seen how the, the caramel just came down. <laughs> <laughs> and the nuts and the raisins. And I looked at that. <laughs> and I and I, I started to my mouth started to water. <laughs> I'm being honest. And I had to tell myself, you can't do that. <laughs> and I look at it again. You can't do that. <laughs> Until I told somebody, you better take this away from me. Because if it's sitting in front of me too long, guess what I'm gonna do? I got to flee from it. Yeah. Run. Yeah. Anytime you see something trying to bring, go against your goal, don't talk to it. Don't try to compromise with it. Uh -uh. Run from it. Run. 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 Right. Run from it. Run you look at it too long, you're going to touch it. Yeah. Uh -huh. burn you, you touch it, you're going to taste it. Ah, <laughs> I want to keep it real. Run. Now, no wonder when that woman started coming at Joseph, Joseph didn't sit there and say, why are you doing this? And I know, Joseph ran. Are y'all listening to me, brothers and sure sisters? Did. Got about it there. Because I got it, because this is going to hinder me. Yeah. And, and one of the main things the enemy's going to try to put before, they didn't know what I was on. It was being nice. Yeah. It was loving on me. Right? But, but they didn't know sometimes your love ain't what I need right now. That ain't what I need. Je Peter said, Jesus, you won't die. And Jesus told him, get behind me, Satan. Mm -hmm. uh, 
I want to keep going. Read, read 25. And everyone who competes for the prize exercises self-control in all things. He's, I like, yours say exercise self-control. Mine says goes into strict training. Mm. Both. If, if do, do you understand how hard them athletes work? You, your body has to, one thing Clay Thompson was saying about Stephen Curry that was so amazing, he said, he's still in the best shape I've ever seen him. Yeah. They said, you should see the work he puts in. Mm -hmm. That's what they said. Yeah. They said, you should see the work he puts in. In other words, once again, what has made him great is that he has put himself in strict training. Mm -hmm. Are y'all listening to me? It's a part. He has made the hard stuff a part of his life. Good yeah, God Almighty. Mm -hmm. But he understands to operate night after night at this, at this level, I have to push myself. Listen to me. In life, you're going to have to push yourself. Amen. You're going to have to push yourself in life. You cannot always look for stuff to be easy. And that's not life. That's not reality. Whether saved or unsaved, you're going to have to push yourself. You're going to have to push yourself in a world that's sinful. You're going to have to push yourself to live saved. You're going to have to challenge yourself. Do not be afraid to challenge yourself. How will you ever get great with no challenge? Because greatness is not on you. Greatness is supposed to be. But to get what's in you out, you're going to have to push it out. Oh, you got to push that baby out. You better. Oh, I would preach this thing. You're going to have to push that thing. It's not easy. 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 This week was not easy. It's not easy. Trust me. It wasn't easy. Amen. This month has not been easy. It's not easy. It, yeah, it looks good. It's shiny, but it ain't easy. Are y'all listening to me? It's not easy. It's not easy. It's not easy to be a leader. It's not easy. It's not easy to be a mama. It ain't easy. It's not easy to be a daddy. It ain't easy. It's not you want to be a boss? It ain't easy. You want to own company? It ain't easy. Trust me. It's not easy. It's not easy. It's going to challenge you in every way. Are y'all listening to me? It's going to make you want to quit. And the only thing that makes you not quitting, amen, is that you see something greater in yourself. Are y'all listening to me? I want to let First, I, I wanted to settle that. As a, it's not easy. Some people make it look easier than what it is. That's because the grace of, the, of God is on their life. I was telling a brother, amen, yesterday when I was taking him to court and we was talking with another brother, I said, brother, if God didn't call you to be a pastor, I wouldn't do this no way, no how. It, this is not easy. This will ruin you if you ain't been called to do this. Are y'all listening to me? Amen. He says, everyone that competes. In other words, before you go into competition, you got to put yourself through training. I should know you're about to win based off how you train. Good God Almighty. Are y'all listening to me? Are y'all listening to me? I'll never forget uh, it was Spinks about to fight Mike Tyson, and and and, and Spinks' trainer went into Mike Tyson's dressing room, and Mike Tyson was punching holes in the wall. And the dress, the Spinks trainer said, "My guy, don't stand a chance." Are oh, y'all listening to me? Because he went in there seeing that man punching so hard and sweating so hard before the fight, based off just his training. Before he ever got in the ring, he could look how he was working and what he was about to do, and it put fear in him. We are supposed to pray till we put fear in the kingdom of hell. We are supposed to read the Bible till we put fear in the kingdom of hell. Are y'all listening to me? We are supposed to live and be so structured and living so holy till the devil gets nervous. Hallelujah. Are y'all listening to me? He said, I seen that man punching holes in that wall. And it scared me to death. Woo! He said, it scared me to death. Uh, uh. It scared us to death. And, and truth be told, that fight didn't last over two minutes. And Spinks literally got knocked through the ropes. Wow. I, I, I mean, literally got knocked out the ring if you ever watched that fight. And he already knew it before he ever got in the ring. Because he's seen how he was trained. Mm. How do you train? Good. What's your, what's your workout repetition? Yeah. 
How many sets do you hit? How can you be expect to be strong if you don't lift any weights? That same thing spiritually. You can't be strong absent of prayer life. You can't be strong absent of study. Nor can you be strong absent of doing. Are y'all listening to me? What makes the anointing come? Good God of mine. He says, he says, whatever you do in your closet, right. I'll reward you openly. Because training doesn't happen in front of people. Training happens by yourself. Self Ah, I Self wish I had time. <laughs> and, and, and we will know, hold on, hold that thought. We will know you're working hard. We will see it one day. Mm-hmm. See, one day we're going to see it. Amen. Y'all have heard me say, you don't have to ask if a woman is pregnant by her husband when she walks in and her belly is fat. Mm-hmm. I know what's already happening behind closed doors. Are y'all listening to me? I can give you the mic, and I can let you go, and I can tell, based on how you can explain the word, how much study you read. Ah, I can sit right here, and I can make a judgment, because once the lights come on, we all going to see what you got. Uh, Are y'all listening to me? And and the worst thing to do is let the lights come, and you ain't trained. Are y'all listening to me? Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Jesus. You got to put in the work. Are y'all listening to me? Challenge yourself to put in the work. Don't challenge yourself to take a cop out, the easy way out. To get to where you're going, you have to be relentless to get there. I got got so much, Lord, and I feel like preaching in this place. (laughs) Good God God Almighty. Hallelujah. Go ahead, read 25. We're supposed to be studying the Bible. Go ahead. <laughs> 26. Uh, oh, wait. No, the ha- B portion, oh, the 25. B portion. Uh-huh. Now they do it to mm. obtain a perishable crown, but we for an imperishable crown. Go ahead. Therefore I run this, not with uncertainty, thus I fight, not as one who beats the air, but I discipline my body and bring it into subjection. Lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. Oh! That's good. He said, I beat my body to subjection. Yeah. Jesus' body was beat. Good God Almighty. The first thing they did to Jesus before they crucified him is they whipped his body with a cat nine iron. A, a cat, are y'all listening to A nine ten. Beat his body into Japan. Beat my body body in subjection. Least I preach and get other people saved and I don't go in myself. That's what he meant. Because it's not about just what you say. It's about what you do. And you can preach something that you're not living. Hey, y'all listen to me. He says, I don't want to preach to other people and they get in and I'm disqualified because I didn't practice what I preached. Uh, I think that's one of the hardest things it is. I mean, I mean, is to follow your own advice. I'm a witness. It's easy for me to tell you what you need to do for your life and how you need to do it and so forth. But sometimes I say, why you can't do that? Like, like see, that's one of the things I'm on this way, love, because I can train athletes. I have trained, we call studs. I mean, this looks like specimens. And I, and I made them look like, I trained them. But I always ask myself, why you can't train yourself like that? Because it's easier for me to train them than it is for me to train me. It's easier for me to tell you to give me 50 than me to get down and give myself 50. Uh, are y'all listening, brothers and sisters? But we don't want to just people, well, we, we want to be people that not only can tell others what to do, but also apply what we do, what we say. Does that make sense, brother? I know there's one thing also about great coaches. I'm just using uh, this coaching as, as a metaphor. Kids or players love the coach that can do the workouts with them. It inspires them. Oh, y'all listen to me. After a while, kids don't like coach that can sit and y'all do this, y'all do that. They, they, some, some kids, especially from our argument, they're going to start saying, won't you come do it, coach? I've heard them. <laughs> won't you come over? You keep telling us to run. Won't you come over and run a lap? I've heard them say it. And so sometimes you got to first 
Now, I used to do it with him first. I would do the one lap. I didn't do all five. But that first one, guess what? I'm going to run with him. And that will inspire them to keep running. Are y'all listening to me? If you, if you want your kids to be strong, you got to sow strength in front of them. If you want your kids to be wise, you got to show wisdom in front of them. If you want your kids to be great, you have to show, you have to display greatness in front of them. They have to see it. So we just tell them, but we don't show them. Ah, hallelujah, Jesus. And God says, just don't tell them, show them what it looks like. Does that make sense, brothers and sisters? What do we have to discipline? I'm not, oh, Lord, I'm supposed to get, I'm going to get done with this. Yeah, yeah, I am. Amen. What what do we have to discipline? Amen. First, amen. Uh, one, okay, go go to Romans 12, 1 and 2. Romans 12, 1 and 2. This is a familiar passage. Talking about self-control, discipline. Discipline, discipline, discipline. Discipline. Got to bring my life self-control. Hallelujah. But how, but how, 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 how do I do this? How do I do this? I know through the Holy Spirit, but more. Romans 12, 1 and 2. Hold your thought too, Brother Carol. I have not forgot about you. Uh-huh. Right? Mm-hmm. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body as a living sacrifice. So, so first, so first, you have to give up your own body. God is not going to force you to do it. You, you have to present yourself a living sacrifice. One thing Jesus did is Jesus put himself on the cross. No one put his, no, no one forced him. Even though it looked like they forced him, they didn't force him. He said, don't think you can take my life. Know that I lay my life down. That's what makes it a sacrifice. Are y'all listening to me? That he gave himself. For God so loved the world that he gave. You have to first present your body, right? A living sacrifice. Go ahead. Holy, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Our mind said, which is true and proper worship. Notice when people used to worship in the old days, they would bow. Mm-hmm. Bow is showing submission. Yeah. I'm submitting myself to you. Right? Christ says it's not enough to worship me with your lips and you haven't given me your heart. He says, there's a part, he said they praise me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They praise me with their lips, but they have not bowed their life to me. Good God Almighty. Are y'all listen to me. You, you have to. Give yourself away. In other words, what, what, what helps you give yourself away is when you don't make yourself your own property. You start to say, my life doesn't belong to me. My life belongs to God. And so now I live not to self-please. I live to please him. That helps the fight. Are y'all listening to me? What's going to help your fight is that you put in your mind, I don't live to please myself. Because what sin really is, is just self-pleasure. That's really what it is. You want to do what you want to do. But I live to please God. So that helps the fight. Because it's going to be a fight. Y'all listen to No, listen to it. It's a fight. We all in it. Because your spirit trying to pull this way and your flesh pulling this way. Amen. It's like some two people on your shoulder. The angel and the devil. <laughs> but now they're on your shoulder, they in you. They in you. <laughs> That's what it is. The angel and the devil. <laughs> good and evil is in you. Everybody in here got good in them, and they got evil on them. Mm-hmm. Everybody. One day you pray down fire, and the same person that prayed blessings turned around and cut somebody out. Ah. Uh, at the same breath. You know why? Because it's good. It's both in you. You're a twin. Like Cain and Abel. Twins. Mm-hmm. Amen. Majority of twins came out the Bible. You ever seen that? Peep that? Go ahead. Um, two. Two. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind mm. that you may prove what 
is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So one way, brothers and sisters, we bring this body under control is that I first have to bring my mind under control. What controls the body? The head. Your mind. Yo, this arm didn't lift because it wanted to lift. This arm lifted because my mind told it to lift up. Does that make sense? So the first place we have to discipline is our thoughts. I got to get my head right. I got, oh, good God Almighty. Does, does that make sense, y'all? You, you're trying to discipline the body absent from disciplining your mind. But 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 the but but you cannot get discipline in your body first. You first have to bring you have to discipline your head, and your head is gonna discipline your mind. What do you think about? What do you think about yourself? Because a lot of the stuff we do, it comes from how we think about ourselves. It comes from how we see ourselves. And if you don't see yourself, According to the scriptures, you abuse yourself. Uh, if you don't see yourself as a royal priesthood, you'll act like a whore. Are y'all listening to me, brothers and sisters? If you don't see yourself as a king, you'll act like a pauper. So, so you first got to get it in your head, I'm somebody. Why am I here? I'm somebody. Yeah. Told a young person, that's beneath you. What are you doing? That's beneath you. You in jail? That's supposed to be beneath you. But you have to see yourself like that. That helps you look up and say, wow. See, see, that was about the prodigal son. One day, the prodigal son, he looked around and he was eating pig slop. And the Bible says he came to himself. He says, I don't supposed to be sitting here eating no pig stop. And my daddy got servants on servants. My daddy is rich. My daddy is prosperous. And, and I'm, hold on. And it says he came to himself. Why did he come to himself? He got in his right mind. He was out of his mind. Ah. Am I making sense in this place? You, you, you have to get control of your head. You got to get control of those thoughts. You got to get control of all of that stuff talking in your ear. Amen. It says you have to renew your mind by the word of God, meaning we don't go off, amen, with people saying, with all these people. We go off with God said about us. Does that make sense, brothers and sisters? You have to be transformed. If I want to make you a doctor, amen, all I got to do is put a bunch of books in front of you and tell you to read all of this information, and the information by itself will start to transform you. You'll start to walk like one and talk like one and think like one. God needs us to think like a Christian. Uh, not just talk with Christian talk. I need you to think like one. Thinking theology. Are y'all listening to me? There's a certain thought to this thing. I feel God. There's a certain thought to this thing. Are y'all not just a sound? There's a thought to it. We read a book. Books derive thoughts and information. You got a book. Because God's trying to get you to think like something. If you can think like it, I don't care if they lock you up. They still can't lock up your mind. They can put chains all around you, but you can't change my mind, and it is my mind that will bring me out of those chains. Ah, oh, are y'all listening to me, brothers and sisters? I thought myself happy. I thought myself well. I thought myself wealthy. I thought myself good. I thought, are y'all listening to me? You got to think yourself. I think in myself small. <laughs> it starts here, y'all. This controls this. This shouldn't control this. That's backwards. The head don't supposed to follow the body. 
Amen. The body's supposed to follow the head. Give you, let me give you a couple more. Second Timothy 1 and 7. So you got to read the Bible so you can get God's thoughts. There's a theology to this. There's a certain way of thinking. There's a certain way a champion has to think. There's a certain way a conqueror thinks. There's a certain way. That's what makes them different. They both got swords. How y'all listen? They both got muscles. Right? They both have been trained. But but what separates us really is our thinking. Because everybody got the same stuff. Two eyes, one, two ears, one nose, one mouth, two lips. Everybody got, ain't nobody, ain't, there's nobody in here that has something different from the next person. We all got the same stuff. The only thing different is about how we think about the stuff we got. You look at your stuff and you tell, you, you, you tell yourself, I don't have enough. And I look at my stuff and I say, I am enough. It's, it's just a thought. Are, are, are you listening to me? It's just how you think about yourself. That's what it is. You look in the mirror and you talk down, and this person looks in the mirror and says, you're beautiful. Yeah. That's just a thought. That's the only thing that separates us. That's how we think. That's it. Are y'all listening to me, brothers and sisters? Because we all got the same stuff. Get God am I? Go ahead. Second Timothy 1 and 7. Mm-hmm. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love of and uh, of power and of love and of a sound mind. And, and they connect in another translation, they connect the sound mind to self-discipline. Because why would you hurt yourself? Yeah. That's not a sound mind. Insanity is to believe you can do the same thing and get a different result. That's insane. I knew I should have put this on IG. No, that that's insane. To think uh, I touched it the first time and it burned me, and if I touch it again, it ain't gonna burn me. That's crazy. Are y'all listening to me? He, but but one of the things you cannot let get in your head is fear. Notice how it connects fear and mind. Fear. Now now we understand why people we need so much mental health. You know why we need so much mental health today? Because the spirit of fear is in this world. And people are crazy because they're afraid. Right? God don't want you to be afraid. God don't want you to be timid. Because people that are bold and champions, they're not afraid. See, 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 the, see the real players will tell you, especially in football, that they don't start playing until they get a good hit. And the fearful people that tell you, you know, they say, ooh, there I go. I'm woke now. And the fearful people are scared to get hit. If you're scared to try, you'll never win. If, if, if you think when you are engaging in something, I'm afraid to lose, you ain't going to try it in. Right? Or you can say, I'm afraid, not to, I'm afraid not to try. It's a different thought. You're afraid to try because you think you're going to lose, and I'm afraid not to try because I know I'll win if I try. Does that, is that making sense? It's just a different thought. That's all it is. I don't think I'm supposed to lose. Losing, what's that? It's a mentality. I've been born to win. When, when Joshua lost battles, the Jews, they ripped their clothes. They put dirt on their face, and they cried out to God like kids because they actually didn't think they were supposed to lose. How can I lose with God? It's for me. Ah, and how can I fail if God be for me? Does that make sense, brothers and sisters? David ran up on a 10-feet giant and knew he was going to kill him with confidence because God was with him. The the whole army was afraid because they doubted. We have to have faith in God. That's all. That's all you need. That's all you need. Lord, are you just with me? That's all you need. But self-discipline shows 
you're in your right mind. Have you ever did something say, I'm stupid? Have you ever told yourself that? I know I have. Well, stop. How can you be so dumb? Because I didn't operate in the truth that I knew about myself. Good God of mine. Ah, am I making sense, brothers and sisters? I, I told myself I was dumb and crazy because I knew this was wrong and I still did it. I knew this would hurt me and I still did it. I knew, I knew if God didn't protect me and this prospered, it would destroy me and I still did it. And I said, what's wrong with you, man? How <laughs> y'all listening to me? Had to start. Have you ever talked to yourself like that? I know I do. Get your head together, son. What you thinking about? Right? But operating in your truth. So you have to have a certain truth about you. That lets you know you're in your right mind. Am I making sense, brothers and sisters? I'm going to give you, man. Go ahead. Give me Philippians. I'm going to give you all this one. And I, I, I got note after note after note. <laughs> give me Philippians 4, 8, 9. What, what, what's your truth about yourself? About yourself. Yourself. What do you think about yourself? What do you think you're supposed to be? What do you think you're supposed to do? You, you know one of my greatest fears, can I share that with y'all? Is not becoming what I see about myself. That's one of my greatest fears, is that I fall short of being who I think I am. Good God Almighty. Ah, that's my fear, because I think myself to be somebody, and I would be afraid to go out, and I didn't achieve what I thought myself to be. That would torment me, to, to know I could have did more and didn't do it. To know I could have went higher and didn't go. To know I could have built something big and didn't build. That would torment me while I would be old on my death. That I would be tormented. Oh, that's why I'm trying to die empty. I'm trying to do all I can see in my head and be all I can be. So when I die, I can be like Paul and say, I finished my course. I can go to sleep with my father. I did everything I could do. Are y'all listening to me? I gave it my best. Some stuff I failed at, some stuff I've exceeded at, but I tried all of it. My wife told me when we was out of town, we'd get on that elevator. Was that on the elevator? You said, no, I was in that room. Thank you for a fun life. Is that what you said? What did you say to me? Amen. Exciting life. Exciting life. Because it's been exciting. It ain't been easy. But we've done everything in there. We've tried everything and done it. Some things have worked. Some things haven't. At least we tried it. I got to live good. Live the good life. Live a full life. I mean, truthful. Lived it. Seen it all. Because I, I got to try. Right? How does it work? I got to go for it. You got to go for it. You got to shoot your shot. <laughs> Y'all listen to me. But the discipline to have a good, but to have a good shot, you got to be disciplined too. Go ahead. Read Philippians 4, 8, Philippians 9. 4, 8, 9. Finally, brethren, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good, of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. I like that. He, so whatever is good about you, think about that. Stop thinking negative about yourself. Whatever, Look at the positive in you. Look at the good in you. Everybody is going to point out your wrongs. You don't be one of those people. Everybody's going to tell you what you can't do. You don't be one of those people. Oh, Y'all listen to me. Find what's good. Think about what's good. Stop waking up thinking about negativity. I'm, I'd hardly thank you, Jesus. I do think about some wrong things, but I don't think I don't. No, very rare. So I don't. I don't want wrong. Like I don't want anything wrong to happen to me. So why am I gonna be rocking around thinking about that? 
I don't think about death. I don't think about failure. I don't think about not having enough. I don't think that I'm, I don't think about none of that. Because I don't want none of that. <laughs> and as a man thinketh in his heart, so are you. So the Bible tells us, think on good stuff. Don't, don't live through a whole day and all you've seen in this day was something wrong. Amen. Because, because there's good and there's evil. Mm -hmm. It depends on how you, what you see. Right. Right? right? You can see the cup half empty or you can see the cup half full. It just depends on your perception. But as you think, you become. Right. You are the sum total of your thoughts. Mm -hmm. Because your thoughts is what causes, is what causes your discipline. Right. You keep thinking wrong, you're going to discipline yourself to being wrong. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. You think you're going down, you're going to discipline your life to go down. down. You're going to take yourself down. Yeah. And then cry and wonder how I got down here. You put yourself down there. Can't nobody do with what they want to do with you. People don't even have to believe in your dream, and that won't stop it from happening. Right, right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The question is, what do you believe? See, see, when they said, when they were going after the promised land, when they said, we're like grasshoppers to them. It canceled out their promise. Mm -hmm. It don't matter if the people that land the men of Canaan, the Anak, the giants looked at them and said, you guys are grasshoppers to us. That don't mean nothing. But when they said it about themselves, mm -hmm. that meant everything. I can tell you, you ain't no good, ain't going to never be nothing, ain't nothing. That don't mean nothing. Mm -hmm. My opinion don't make your life. Mm -hmm. But if you look in the mirror and start saying, I ain't no good, I ain't going to never be nothing. That, that's something right there. Right, right. We got a problem. Houston, we got a problem. Because ah. <laughs> you, you, that's how you're perceiving yourself. Right. But yeah. God says, whatever is good, whatever is holy, whatever brings you joy, whatever makes you smile. He said, put your mind on that. Amen. In other words, think up. Think up. So you can discipline your life to go where? Up. I'm going up. Good Lord Almighty. Hallelujah, Hallelujah Jesus. Hallelujah. Anybody believe that about their life? Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going up. Going Hallelujah. Up. Hallelujah. But before all week, before I got on that stage, you know what I told myself in that dress room? I'm finna rock that thing. I told, I told myself, I'm going when I hit that thing, I'm gonna lose control. I'm gonna lose myself in the moment. So I told myself, I didn't tell nobody else that. I didn't have to. I, didn't have to. I already told myself. Are y'all listening to me? No, I'm not, I'm not going out there timid. I'm not going out there nervous. I'm not going. But I practiced. All that was rehearsed. Are you listening to me? Nothing on, nothing on that stage I did for the most part. Some of it was. Most of it was almost down to what I was going to say. I knew what I was going to say. Because I rehearsed. Because how can you have a great performance without a good rehearsal? Amen. Are you listening to me? I told them. I told them, Israel, I'm going to start singing about favor. And, and once I point at you, I need you to do that song. That, that's all. It's all rehearsed. It's all rehearsed. Are you listening to me? We practice it. We practice it. We practice it. We practice it. And we got what we wanted because we practiced. It wasn't shot from the head. Oh, y'all listen to me. Yeah. And so, brothers and sisters, I end this with this. First, we have to operate under self-control to get to what we're trying to get. Yeah. Are y'all listening to me? Mm -hmm. You have to be relentless to get there. You got to be a dog if you're going to get there. All right? Secondly, brothers and sisters, you have to live to win. Failure should not be an option for us. To fall short, that should not be an option. Why? You got God. How can you not arrive if you got God? That don't make no sense to me. Right? If we really believe in who he really is. How can you fail with him? Are y'all listening to me? 
We have to bring our thoughts under control. It is your thoughts that control your body. Discipline your thoughts. Discipline your thoughts to only think with Jesus. The Bible says it this way. Let the mind that's in Christ Jesus be also in you. Are y'all listening to me? You got to think like Jesus. Amen? You got to think like how we get his thoughts is we get in this word. We apply it. We do it. We discipline ourselves to do it. Even in hard situations, I got to do what the word told me to do. Sometimes it's going, that's what makes the word cut you sometimes. Because I, I, you didn't, ugh, I'm ready to, ugh. But I can't do that. <laughs> right? And, the, and now it's cutting me. Now it's doing me like this. Ugh, it's stabbing me. Because it's beating my, killing my flesh. Sometimes the word is going to make you uncomfortable. It's supposed to. Because it's going to kill us. Sometimes I, God gives me sermons to preach, and I don't want to preach them. Because some of that stuff I'll be struggling with. And so when I get up here, I'm cutting myself. Ooh, ooh. Right? Because now i got to really do it because I didn't preach it. Uh, does that make sense, brothers and sisters? Amen. Go ahead. Verse 9, we done. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do. And the God of peace will be with you. Amen. Amen. Whatever you've seen Jesus do, do it. Be an imitator of Christ. A brother told me that today. That's so min that was so interesting. That's shit you have you read that. A brother told me that today in my program. He says, I imitate you. That's what he told me. I imitate you. He said, because I'm trying to, I, I want to be a man of God. I want to live for God. And right now, I'm looking at you in that light. He said, so I'm trying to do what you're doing. Somebody told me that today in my office. He, that's, what, that's what we're supposed to do with Jesus. We're supposed to read about him and then imitate him. Imitate him. Love like he loved. Right? Help like he helped. Remember that old saying, what would Jesus do? Imitate him. And before you know it, you'll be just like him. Don't be separate from Jesus. We're supposed to be like him. We don't supposed to be separate from him. We don't supposed to be other another form per se. We supposed to be just like when they see us. They supposed to see him. But you got to imitate him. I have to imitate him. Does that make sense? We have to become copycats, right? Copy Christ. He's a winner. He's a winner. I often was told if you do what they did, you can get what they got. It's, it's just really just that easy. If if you want to know how a person got to a situation, ask them. And just do what they told you. And if they write, you'll get right to that same place they was at. Just It's really just that simple. Don't, don't hate on them. Imitate them. How you do that? Show me how you do that. Right? That's how you, that's what to do. If you, if you perceive them to be something or doing, going something that you, you want to do, ask them. That's, that's why I, a lot of people I hang around and admit to, like these brothers and other people, the people I want to be like. I serve them so I can see how they do what they do. And I say, come on, I'll open the door for you. One thing I asked, he throwing somebody, I said, what you need? Let me help you. I want to imitate you because I'm trying to get to where you at. Are y'all listening to me? And it's the same road. It's the same way. If it worked for them, it'll work for you. You might have to change stuff a little bit just to fit your person how you do, but it's the same thing. Are y'all listening to me, brother? It ain't going to come out no different. But you got to imitate them. Amen? Amen? Any questions? Brother K, if you had a question or comment. Get strong. Yeah, do it. Yeah. Wow. 
That's God telling you. Yep, tell control. Get strong. You can. You can. You you could be the buffest elderly man they ever seen if you if you really want to. You could be walking around. Everybody be like, look at Kevin. You can. Yeah, you can do it. You can do it. It ain't, it ain't gonna be easy. But self control. Uh, Digger James to tell me when he trained me, anything above zero is a plus. Just, you can do Who said you can't? You can do it. Yeah. You're still strong, huh? You shocked yourself. You can still, let's still got it. Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> Strengthen yourself. You don't have to go down. Rise yourself up. You can do that. You don't have to. You can but you don't have to. Do it. Do it. Show that devil. Show that devil. Watch this. Amen. Wow, that's the Lord. Yeah. 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 Why not? Yeah. Come on. Go to work now. Go to work. Go to work now. Go to work. That's all. That's good. That's good. It makes a lot of sense too. That makes a lot of sense in your situation. Anybody else? Yep, in and out. Yep. No boundaries. Yep. Yep. One way I talk about programming, I'm coming to use this. One way you know what's supposed to be in your life and what shouldn't be in your life based off how you program your life. So you got to have a program, a playbook. Where you based off where you're trying to go, and how I know this person should be like so. So every morning we get up around seven or so o'clock. Every morning I do the same thing. I get up, I get dressed, I call her. We talk about the day. I get off the phone with her. I get on first fruit. I do that every day, just about. If I get a phone call in between that, I don't answer it. If it's not her, I won't answer it. Because that's not what I do at this time. You understand what I'm saying? So I know what I should let in and what I shouldn't let in based off my program. If, if, if you're telling yourself, per se, I'm going to hit the gym at 9 o'clock every day. Or just say you told yourself that. Anything that comes at 9 o'clock is a distraction. Don't let it in. You, you understand what I'm saying? It's gonna might come shiny, it might come pretty, it might come this. No. Cause every day I told myself, I'm gonna hit this gym at nine o'clock. Cause I'm trying to get somewhere. You understand? But if you don't have those are boundaries. If you don't have walls or boundaries, this stuff comes in and out. And how can you get to a I, you don't you don't get to a destination walking like this. You get to a destination walking straight. That's how you get to a destination. So if you say, I'm going straight, anything trying to pull you, look at this. That's a distraction. Don't let it in. You're distracting me. You're hindering me from getting to the goal that I've set my own truth. This is your own truth. You told yourself that. No one told you that you was going to hit that gym every day. You said that to yourself. That's your own truth. Right? And you got to follow your own truth. If you can't follow your own truth, then who... You can't follow nothing. <laughs> you told yourself that. Does that make sense? So, so you have to put boundaries up in your in your life, so you will know what do I let in, and what do I let out. Amen. Mm -hmm.
Amen. 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 Follow yourself. Amen. 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 But but even if you put her in another school, eventually you can't. You just got to know how to discipline. That's like us. You can't leave this world. <laughs> like I don't care. Everywhere you turn, there's something wrong. You just have to know how to discipline yourself in the midst of it, because it's 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 all around us. It's nothing you can you can't you can't run and hide from nothing, right? You just have to you have to just have what we like we've been studying self. Just because you're doing it, never let, and this is me, I know we got, we're going to close out in prayer, but never let somebody control your mind. Think for yourself. Never give nobody your mind, and you just go, I'm going to do, 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 no, 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 no. If you don't want to go, don't go. Drop me off. No, 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 drop me off. I'm not doing that. I, I had to learn that. But I told, I tell people now, I'm not doing that. No, I'm not doing that. Or I can do that. Or no. You know what I mean? Like, no, if I don't want to do it, I'm not doing it. And I don't have to do it. And you can try to put a guilt trip on me, but I don't care. Because I'm going to think for myself. Even in the times that we're living in, you better know how to think for yourself. You better be able to bring yourself to a conclusion. Don't just go off the news and what them are saying and names. I'm telling you, come to your own conclusions. Right? Self-control. I got to lead myself. Le le you understand what I'm saying? Don't be a sheep and follow somebody off a cliff. I'm not following. I remember forget we had a company going down. Me and, me and Deacon Stallings worked for it. And I told Deacon Stallings one day, and he probably he might remember. I told him I ain't going down with this ship. I told him just like that. Mm -mm. I'm getting off this boat. <laughs> you, and I and I play. I, I leveraged a, a deal because they because there's other. I said because there's other people wanted me, wanted me, and I, I said well I might stay with them. I might stay with them. They said we'll give you a little bit more. I said well I might stay with them. No. <laughs> but I never told him that place was closing. I knew it was closing. They didn't know. I used it as leverage to get more over here. Because you never let your right hand know what your left hand doing. You understand what I'm saying? They could have used it against me if they knew they was closing. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, I'm not going down with your mess. No, I'm not. No, I wish. Psh, no, I wish I would. If you, if you don't want to go, I got to go. Go ahead, sweetie. I like that. I'm going to preach that one. Got to preach. I really like my sermon Sunday. <laughs> But 
but just but just love on her when she gets you. You love on her, you pray for her, you be her friend, right? But one one thing that's so interesting because Christians are not supposed to be bystanders. Christians are supposed to be upstanders. Jesus told us to fend for the poor. So he told us, help those that need. Don't just look at them and say they're on you. That's not what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to be those that help. Yes, ma'am. God be the glory. Yes, Holy Ghost. Yes. Yep. Yep. Get self control. Yep, that's right. That's right. Thank you, Lord. Yes, mine too. All of ours. <laughs> Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. That's it. That's it. We we got we we play to win. I'm gonna win. I'm gonna fight. I'm gonna fight. My my grandma used to tell us die fighting. When we grew up. She said, "Don't no, you say don't start nothing." She said, "But if something starts you, you said you better." She said, "She should tell us you better fight till you die." She tell it. But you got to be that about life. You got to be that about your dreams. Yeah. You got to be that about your goals. Yeah. You have to be relentless yeah. at this thing. I'm going to close with this. I heard Bishop Jake say this one morning, and it stuck with me. He said, relentlessness will get you there. Relentlessness will get you there. If you take no, if you don't take no for an answer, you're going to get where you want to go. Consistency will keep you there. Because once you get there, you got to stay consistent to stay there. Gratefulness will grow us there. I said, woo. Relentlessness will get you there. Consistency will keep you there. But being grateful that you're there will actually make it grow. Stand to your feet. Amen. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. Self-control. We all need it because we're all fighting the lust of the flesh, the lust of the lie, the eye, and the pride of life. Everyone in here is fighting their flesh. Everyone in here is fighting the lust of the eye. And everyone in here is fighting that pride thing. Amen? But I'm going to control myself. And I'm going to do what God told me to do. I'm going to live the way God told me to live. Matter of fact, let's say, I will, I will do, do what God, what God told, me to do. told me to do. I will live according, according to, the Bible. to the Holy Bible. Father, we thank you, we praise you, we honor you. And we glorify you, Master. We're all in the fight. We're all in the fight, Lord. But you told us to fight like we're trying to win. You didn't tell us to lay down. You didn't tell us to have a pity party. You didn't tell us to say, why me, why me? You told us, get up, dust yourself off, and go fight and live and be who I'm calling you to be. In the mighty name of Jesus. I pray strength in this area for all of us, Lord. 
We all need to be more self-controlled, Lord. We all need to align our lives up with your word, Father God. We all, Father God, need discipline, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you make us disciples, Father God. We don't want to be people that go to church. We want to be disciples of Jesus Christ. When they see you, they see us, Master. When they see us, they see you, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, bless us, Father God. Father God, bless us to walk in your way. Bless us to walk in your way. Bless us to live the way you told us to live. I thank you for your people. I thank you for this opportunity to feed the flock, Lord, by what you died for, Master. Thank you for walking us through these fruits, Father God. Thank you that we've completed this lesson, Father God. And now, let them happen. Let us have joy and peace and love and faithfulness and self-control and gentleness and kindness and meekness, Lord. Let it happen now. Take Change our character, Lord. We all need better character, Lord. Change our character in the mighty name of Jesus. And let us all see ourselves as you see us. We give you the glory, honor, and praise. Everybody, I just heard the Holy Ghost say this. I am enough. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Give God a round of applause. You're enough. Lord willing, we'll be.